Welcome to the Morning Talk with Lenora. Morning Talk. Morning Talk with Lenora. Hi, good morning. <clears throat> Welcome to the Morning Talk with Lenora. Well, today I'm going to share, you know, I often talk about how important it is for people with chronic illnesses and illness in general to get their rest. And one of the things I like to do is when I rest, I like to make it purposeful or, you know, I like to, I guess I'm not really resting, but, <laughs> but like Friday nights, for instance, if I'm home on Friday nights, which I'm home, I, um, I like to watch movies. So, um, I just started like digging out my movies that I had all along and started, you know, um, getting back into them. Well, my camera's cro crooked. It's crooked. Okay. It's even more crooked. I have it there. Okay, that's the best I can do. Um, this last Friday, I did a my version of a Denzel marathon. And the title of my show today is Don't Sleep on Denzel. I'm trying to tell you. Well, I started off with an old, an old one. This is More Better Blues. And um, by this time, he had already won an Academy Award for it. And, and, and I think that Academy Award was uh, not for this movie, but he won it for Glory. I'm using my brain right now, not my, not my notes. I believe he won it for glory. And um, he, uh, they, the, the story description is, um, Denzel gives a riveting performance of Spike Lee's, and yeah, I forgot the important part. It is a Spike Lee joint. Denzel gives a riveting, breathtaking, a riveting performance in Spike Lee's breathtaking film on music and love. Talented trumpeteer, Bleak Gillian, played by Denzel, is obsessed with his music and indecisive um, by his mu indecisive about his girlfriends. Indigo, which is made by Julie Joy Lee, which happens to be um, Spike Lee's sister, and Clark, which is Cinder Williams. But when he is forced to come to the aid of his manager, childhood friend Spike Lee, Bleak finds his world more fragile than he ever imagined. Stunning cinematography and arousing score and superlative performance come together in this unforgettable feast for the senses. Well, let me tell you what I thought. Well, um... I personally, there was some music in here that was really good. Um, I liked um, Cinder Williams sang a song, and the song was um, Harlem Blues. I loved that song, and I've listened to it several times since I watched the movie. And I will provide that link because you gotta, you, you gotta listen to it. It's good. Um, what I loved about the movie is again. Um, this is uh, a Spike Lee joint, and he's very good. He had some great cinematography shots. Um, like, um, he did uh, the 360 camera. I thought that was cool with Denzel in it. And um, even at a young age, you could see that Denzel was very talented. Now, he had a very strong stat, uh, cast to work with. You know, in this movie, Wesley Snipes was this movie, and Wesley Snipes was not going to be denied. You could see he was a strong actor himself. He played a very good part. He's a very good nemesis in the beginning. And Frank kind of friended me with uh, Denzel. He was really good. They had um, um, Charlie Murphy was in it, and he was really funny. He played like a little henchman. And uh, this is where I, you see Radio Raheem before you saw him in the other movie. Um, they even had Samuel Jackson in there, playing a crook. You know, you know Samuel Jackson so hard. Well, he was in it too. 
And as I said, from the soundtrack, they had a really good um, song by Cinder Williams called Mubeta Blues. And then um, a lot of the uh, saxophone stuff was John Coltrane. And um, they had a little Miles Davis in there. And uh, the Bradford Rosales um, group. I know there were a couple of Coltrane songs that I actually looked up um, that I like. Uh, Tunji, T-U-N-J-I. And Mr. Knight. Um, there was also um, they were some, like I said, it was a great soundtrack. I mean, I it was uh, I enjoyed it. It was um, you know it was different. It was like seeing Denzel, like if you never saw him before, you saw him in the beginning, and you saw that he was very a very powerful presence. Um, another movie that I watched that. Uh, was with Spike Lee Jr. as well. It was Denzel and him together. It is Inside Man. Now, an Inside Man, um, there were some very good, strong actors in here as well. And they said, uh, again, Academy Award winner Denzel Washington. He was also in with the movie with another Academy Award, Award winner, Clive Owen. And he played the... Um, he played the bank robber. And then there was uh, Jodie Foster. She's also an Academy Award winner, winner. She played like the, um, the bad Olivia Pope where, you know, she had connections. And she was like making things happen for rich people doing whatever. For instance, she was actually do, getting an ap apartment for Osama Bin Laden's nephew. You know, that was like taboo, you know. For her to be hooking them up, but you know, for enough money, you get the hookup. So she did that in the movie, and they said the perfect bank robbery quick, <clears throat> the perfect bank robbery, quickly spirals into unstable, deadly game of cat and mouse between a criminal mastermind, which was Clive Owen, and a determined detective, Denzel Washington, and a powerful broker with a hidden agenda. As I said, that's Jodie Foster. As the minutes tick by and the situation becomes increasingly tense, one wrong move could mean disaster for any one of them. From acclaimed director, Spike Lee comes the ed comes the edge of your seat. Action packed thriller. The Wall Street Journal calls a heist that's right on the money. And it was a good movie. I mean it's uh just the, the story was good, you know, how they pulled off this bank robbery and the plan and how they did it was quite ingenious. Um, what, I, what I liked about it again was um, that he, um, so he did a, Spike Lee did a, 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 cinem a cinematography trick of the camera where Denzel was walking and Instead of like walking alongside of him, the camera was in front of him. It was like he walking into the camera, and then the background was kind of blurred. I thought that was really cool. There were some other great cinematography things. There was a nice shot of Clive Owen, the bank robber. He was in front of the safe, and I liked the way it lined up the safe, the money, the, you know, and how the safe is shaped. Um, uh, there was a picture of. Um, Denzel, um, Jody, uh, Denzel on these stairs, and I mean, it's really, it's very, you know, it's, I took pictures, and when you can line up a picture and get, you know, like the front and the back focus and all that, but, um, you know, it's quite, because Spike Lee is very uh, talented at that, you know, he, his techniques are very, um, they jump out at you, and you know it's a Spike Lee joint because of it. Um, now, Denzel and this was, uh, he was a, a definite boss. I think um, the, move, the movie starts off kind of slow, but the robbery, once the robbery comes underway, it becomes a lot more exciting. One of my favorite scenes in his is when um, Denzel um, gets to the, um, the rich man who's, he's trying to, you know, hide his past that he did dealings with the Nazis, uh, you know, and stole money from rich Jews and, and stuff like that. And he ended up building this empire because they got a saying when there's blood on the streets, 
you can buy real estate, you should buy real estate. Well, this guy did. Well, anyway, um, when Denzel had the goods on him, you know, he went and, you know, gave him the, the you know, went into his office, you know, told him about himself and basically let him know, look, I know what's happening. Well, his partner, he said to him, he said, let me look at your shoe. And he turns out what he said. I have never seen anybody put their foot so far up somebody's behind before. Now you know I'm saying it like PG, but I mean it's really funny. And Denzel, you know that walk. That walk was ever since more better blues. I mean in Training Day you see it, but that walk was he. That's that's his. That's another one of his signature things. Um, now as far as the movie in Inside Man, the music. There's a song um, in the beginning. I, I looked it up, and um, it's really nice. It goes ting a ting a ting. It's kind of a mix of India, and there's a little rap in it, and um, I loved it. I thought I wrote it down, but I guess I didn't. You can miss it though. I mean, it starts the song. It starts the movie off. It's really great. So you know, I listen to the music and stuff too when I watch it. Um, the next movie I want to talk about is um, Man on Fire. This is it. Now, according to what they say, they say um, Man on Fire is hard, is Denzel a character, is a hard drinking, burnt out CIA operative called John Cleesey. Creasy has given up on life until he's hired as a bodyguard to nine-year-old Peter Ramos, played by little Dakota Fanning back then. Bit by bit, Creasy begins to receive his soul, but when Peter is kidnapped, Creasy's fiery rage is released, and he will stop at nothing to save her. He is a serious... Oh, Denzel is beast in this movie. For the criminals. He really is. Um, I saw it as a modern-day Beauty and the Beast. Because um, once he was hired to take care of a little girl, um, he had, at one point had gotten so low he was a drinker that he tries to kill himself. But, um, but when he was trying to kill himself, he had a bullet in the gun and the gun didn't go off. And he didn't understand why the gun didn't go off. He even called him friend. So... In, in essence, he was sent there to um, save her, and in reality, she saved him. She saved him to want to live, and she even gave him a crucifix, a Catholic uh, deity, I believe it was. He, she gave it to him, and when he, uh, he died, he died holding on to that thing. So I saw this Mon Baby and Beast where, you know, this little girl comes in and um, rekindles um, care and love and somebody who spent most of their life killing but his talent as a killer helped her out so you know he was uh like i said he was a beast in this movie um there's a music in here by lisa gerard that i loved there's a, a a hispanic song um i'm gonna put it in the um in the um you know in the bottom that caught my ear and I really liked it. So um, I'm going to share it with you all. And the last movie that I'm going to share with you um, from Denzel that I like is Out of Time. Now, they say that the two time Oscar winner, because by this time he'd already done training day and then you know he won it for glory. The two time Oscar winner, Denzel, will. Denzel Washington is fantastic in the inventive, exciting, spellbounding thriller, co-starring Eva Mendez, Sanaa Latham, and Dean Cain. In Banyan K, a small Florida town surrounded by absurd seas and sultry secrets, Chief of Police Matt Whitlock, Denzel Washington, finds himself caught up in the eye of the storm and about to get blown away investigating the murder of a woman he was secretly seeing. Matt races to uncover a murky trail of stolen money, drugs, deceit, all the while staying two steps ahead of his own detectives because of all the evidence pointed to him. Now, that's the story. But when I'm watching it, what I found is 
I look, I really got to look at Denzel the actor. Now his acting chops really stood out to me. And one scene um, that I saw was um, when he finally found out that the character's synonymous was playing lied to him. You can literally see the blood drain out of his face. And I'm like, that's acting. I mean, he was stunned and frozen, unbelieving. You could see all of that on his face. And I was like, I was like, oh, that's Denzel right there. And then um, another true sign is when he, when he was in fear of his life for Sanaa shooting him. I mean, he was on the floor begging, and you would see the fear in his face. And I mean, those are the things that made Denzel such a good actor. I mean, he's like, I mean, by this time, of course, he already did train day, so you already know he's a bad man already. And then um, the, other, the other scenes that I like is when it's near the end, it's when um, Eva Mendez, his wife that was going to divorce him, decided she wanted to move back into their boathouse. And his friend was there talking to him about this big check from the insurance company that he was about to get, but he couldn't hear his friend because his wife was telling him he's, she was going to move back in. And you can see the sheer joy on this man's face, you know, that he's going to get his wife back. And then, you know, he's like looking at his wife and they look at each other and then, you know, of course, they get the look where they got to take, they started standing up. And, you know, he got her hand and, you know, they started, you know, walking off into, you know, to do whatever to whoever. You know, I guess they ain't seen each other in a while. So, you know, they had to rekindle. But, um... I mean, there's a lot going on in the movie. Sonal Latham was really good. I mean, um, I, I watched the uh, documentary, not documentary, but you know how when you watch movies, they have like directors, kind or whatever. Well, I saw the anniversary of Spike Lee and um, Denzel, and I heard him talking. And um, they were talking about how they um, worked together and how they made these movies. And, um, you know, because of course he did Malcolm X with uh, Spike Lee as well. But I saw uh, someone say that when they put Denzel in movies, that he, Spike Lee said that he has to put strong actors next to him or Denzel will run over him. And um, I guess in, I, what made me think about Denzel is I see uh, Denzel-ish characters in Chadwick Boseman. I've watched him in two movies. Well, I saw him in, in uh, Jackie Robinson and I think I'm saying it right. And I'll make sure I check it out. And I remember exactly I saw him play James Brown. I thought he was great. I know people didn't think that was a good representation of James Brown, but Chaz McWilliams act his butt off. I mean, when I saw him in Panther, I thought he was like mild in there, you know, because all the hoopla, but his acting skills I saw elsewhere. He just has this glisten so in his eyes. So that's what made me remember that you can't sleep on Denzel, you know, because Denzel is consistent. You know, and um, I, I, I perceive that Chadwick Boseman is going to be the same. I do, because he seems to be consistent thus far. But um, there are so many other great movies. I, I have trained in. I've watched it. And um, I thought that, yes, he, like I said, he, uh, Denzel is consistent. But his Academy Award could have been in other things. He didn't have to play a dirty cop, even though he did it well. But he did all these other roles, detective, these other roles, detective, you know, and other things. I mean, he won for uh, playing a dirty cop in a um, in a, a soldier doing slavery. I guess that was it. Because I, I, I don't like watching Glory, so. I just remember that scene where everybody remembers where Denzel standing there getting whipped. And um, he's standing there hard and, you know, not flinching, just taking the lashes. But the tear kind of comes down from his eyes, you know. That's the, the scene that people remember most. Well, um, you know, I don't have no two snaps and a twist or none of that, but I, I enjoy sharing um, movies. And, you know, maybe there's people out there who don't, who have not had the chance to view Denzel's movies. So I hope you, this piques your interest and you decide that you want to go ahead and look at some of these movies. So thank you for sharing um, with me as I um, share with you. It's kind of corny, right? I um, hope to see you next time and um, hope you enjoy my reviews. Thank you for watching. Goodbye. So, y'all have a great day and I'll talk to you soon.
Thank you for joining me. Please subscribe to my channel and like it. If you have any questions, put them in the comments. I'll try to answer them.